what is it you, that you think is fundamental to every human being's experience of physical and mental and emotional wellness? What's fundamental to that? Love, maybe? Is that, is that a word that works for you guys? Love. Let's just say love. Now, when I say love, is that a mental construct? Is it a, is it a, is, I mean, we talk about, sometimes you, I see it talked about that love is, is a power. And the power of love, we say, can like transform anything and it, trans it certainly transcends and maybe it transforms every limitation. I think that, and love is what, I, here's the way it worked for me. When I was a child and I was raised in the Catholic Church, I was taught that my, my purpose on earth was to love God. I mean, there was more to it than that. My purpose was to know, love, and serve God in this world. And I took that seriously. And frankly, church, as a Catholic kid, I went to church about six or seven days a week, sometimes more than once. My parents were really committed to their Catholicism, and if they even heard a rumor that the Pope said it, they did it. But I took this whole idea about love seriously, and I really tried as a, as a child to find love in my heart, to find love in myself. I mean, if, it had, if I had found it in my big toe, that would have worked. I, I, looked, I, f I found it right here in the middle of my body. And finding it there, I really tried to communicate that to a higher power, to God. And so I felt that love, and I tried to feel that love in myself, my love rising up in me to God. And I had the experience in making that effort over time of love, which I first thought was a love of God, descending on me. As that experience rolled on, I felt that the love in me and the love that was God was actually the same love, wasn't different at all, and that in fact God was love. And that experience, the state that I entered into in that experience of communicating and receiving love completely, well first of all, it was the only happy place I ever went to in my entire childhood. And it's now the only happy place I, I ever go to, I've ever been, is that, that love. And as a child, that was my retreat, my cave, you know, living in a, in a family of five kids that were a year apart, a crazy Catholic family, my cave and my retreat was my own heart and the love that was inside me. And so, you know, that was my practice that I got separated from in high school when my hormones kicked in. You know, I probably was playing football at the time and was getting hit in the head, you know, really solidly a few times a year. But in any case, whatever happened, however it happened, I ended up meeting my guru, Rudy, and rediscovering that whole experience. I should say I rediscovered it earlier in engaging in the practice of, uh, in asana practice in yoga, but you know, it, that experience was magnified 
100,000 times when I met Rudy. And Rudy's fundamental teaching was that we really had to take responsibility for our own state, and if we wanted any kind of quality of life at all, we had to begin to turn our attention inside, acknowledge and address the tensions, the fears, you know, the desires that we have, and dissolve them in the flow of our own creative energy which reveals our deepest inner heart and the love that is our essence. And finding, becoming responsible, finding our heart, opening our heart every day, totally changes the quality of our experience and makes available to us a clarity and a beauty that is ever available inside us and allows us to begin to live from that, and living from that changes everything. It changes everything. It totally changes the way we see the world. It totally changes what our goals are and our aspirations. It totally changes our perception of ourselves and what we think we need. <sighs> Hallelujah. Opening our hearts every day, finding that love in ourselves, and moving in the world, what do we see? A lot of distress is what we meet in our daily lives. And the commitment to, that we have to lift our own spirits, you know, becomes also an effort to lift the spirit of the environment that we live in and the people we connect to. Because when we discover love in ourselves and we discover love around us, we also discover that the same love that is our own essence is the essence of each life that lights up, or in some cases doesn't, the life of this planet. And so in some sense, to discover love in ourselves is also to discover our interconnectedness, our interdependence, and you know, to see that to lift our own spirit, sometimes we have to help somebody else. Which is not a big problem because we also discover that the love within us is an infinite resource that is not just a theoretical construct, it is a living power of life itself that you know, animates us and everything. But, you know, in the real world, living a life of love sometimes gets translated into thoughts of, you know, how can this be better? This world can be better for all of us. And activity that we engage in, you know, to serve our community, to serve our families, to serve our communities, to serve each other. Opening our hearts, you know, and growing love within ourselves is not a narcissistic or an egoistic endeavor. Well, sometimes it, you know, gets political. And it's not my job to tell anybody, you know, anything about anything political. And it's not even my job to help you, you know, to tell you how you should express yourself creatively. It is my job to point out to you that you have an unimaginable possibility, unimaginably beautiful possibility, that is living in the core of your being, waiting for you to reach deeply enough into yourself and hold a space long enough that that unimaginable possibility can become alive and express itself.
How amazing is that? It's, it's amazing. And the truth is, most of you are who, who most of you who are here are here because something inside you has called you here because it is trying to wake up and express a bigger possibility in your life than has been expressed to date. Our non-dual pers perspective of the total unity of life on earth acknowledges and respects and engages diversity with the understanding that contact, alignment, and flow transforms every, every rock and every tension, you know, every tree, every hatred, every, every, every judgment, everything into creative energy and possibility, which can be expressed for the good of the whole. That's why we live in community. That's why we work on ourselves. That's why we do service on, in all the different ways that we do. The turbulent times that we live in represent a time of tremendous energy in the atmosphere, and it also represents a time of tremendous opportunity for growing. But it's growth is growing, taking real, a real look at ourself and really becoming responsible for changing ourself for the sake of making the world a better place to live is not a bullshit effort. It's real work. It ain't whistling Dixie. It's saying, yeah, I can do better, better than I've done, and trying. And we all can. I say it to myself every other day. I take a break from every other day to digest it. We do what we do because we are committed to growing spiritually, to growing love, to loving God in all the forms that God manifests in this world as. We're committed to living a life of love. You know, that begins with a commitment to open our hearts every day to ourself, to forgive ourselves, and also to make the effort to open our hearts and do a little better, and to forgive each other, and to find together a flow, a flow. That's what the practice is about. We sit here with our eyes open, engaging all of our senses and finding in that a connection to ourself and a connection to one another. If we can find a connection to ourself and from ourself to another person, we can eventually find it with every human being on earth and the total environment. If we're just here, to eat and shit and have babies. You know, I think we're wasting our time. Nothing wrong with eating and shitting and have babies, but that's all great. But there's, there's so much more that we need to do for the sake of the babies that we have, at least. So, going forward in this crazy world, Let's continue to work to open our hearts and cultivate a connection to ourself and to our deepest and finest place and, and go forward in our days from that finest place to transform our life and the lives of all the people that our life touches. Namaste, everybody. Namaste.